Welcome back, Golly Vice family, my brothers and sisters. So today's episode is about George Janko interviewing Andrew Tate. Now, we know that George Janko is a man who confesses the Lord. He says he's a Christian. And Andrew Tate is somebody who says he used to be a Christian, but now he is in Islam. So it's interesting that George Janko had an interview with Andrew Tate and the topic of Islam and being a Christian was brought up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to watch it and give some commentary on it. Yeah, man, let's give our thoughts. Let's check it out. Never in the day of age did we ever have the power to talk to a mass group of people since the internet. Yep. So ironically, we're running into this problem of less of our people, yep. but we also have the gift of reaching out to more people. Correct. So another household could have five kids, but who's to say that I can't encourage them to have my morals and standpoints? Well, absolutely. You you could you could you so could I don't have... need I don't need to procreate, I need to provide and educate. That's very interesting point of view. But then you also this brings us into the Islam versus Christianity argument. And I want to make it very clear to the world that I am not anti Christian in any way. Most of my family is Christian. My brother is Christian. For a long time, when I Tristan, first... Tristan's Christian? Yeah, he's Christian. Cool. He's, when, he's happy and he has fun. Yeah, that's right. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps that's why. <laughs> when I first stopped being atheistic, I reverted or diverted to Christianity because it was all I knew. Because I was raised Christian. I went to church as a kid. It's all I knew. But you're talking about the fact that, yeah, people can come into the nation, but if they become Christians once they arrive, then the Christian, Christian faith survives. Yeah. But I think that... For that to happen, there would have to be some form of power gap or power vacuum, and it's not atheists which are arriving, and it's going to be very difficult to convince them out of Islam into Christianity, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I am not an Islamic scholar, and I don't consider myself knowledgeable on Islam. I'm new to the religion. I'm only a year in, and I'm studying as best I can, but there's a lot of people who know more than me. But yeah. from my understanding and my practices, Islam is very rigid. And it's strict and you know what's right and you know what's wrong. Mm. And it provides solutions and answers in a very strict, non-ambiguous way. And I feel like if you live a difficult life, like we talked about earlier about why my fan base is so galvanized and why they believe in me, because I offer rigid solutions to problems. And if you come from a difficult place or you graze in a difficult country or a war zone, you're going to look for that rigidity. I don't think the softness of Christianity... And I don't say that as an insult. Mm. I just state that as a matter of fact. Will be appealing to people who have come from war zones. I, I just don't. I think it's going to be very difficult to convert them to Christianity. And and we're seeing now. See, Andrew Tate has not done his study on Christians. There was nothing soft about the apostles being brutally murdered. There was nothing soft about early Christians. The early Christian martyrs being fed to lions, being set on fire, being skinned alive, all because they would not give up their faith, all because they would not renounce Jesus Christ. There's nothing soft about that. Nothing. There's nothing soft about my brothers and sisters who are in these different Islamic countries getting their heads taken off because they won't deny the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing soft about that, Tate. What are you talking about? Americanized Christianity? A lot, of the, a lot of these different denominations who are putting up rainbow flags? These different people who contradict the word of God? These different people who try to change scripture and doctrine? What are you talking about? Them? Let's get down to who the true Christians are. There's nothing soft about a true Christian who is dying to themselves to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing, nothing soft about that. Nothing soft about them. There's nothing soft about who we follow, who gave his life. Who gave his life for me, for you, for people who are ungrateful like this. Thinking that they could just change God. Like, <clears throat> there's nothing soft. You know, you know, you know what's hard to do? Be the bigger person. Be the one who say, no, we don't need to fight. Let's let's keep peace. That's what's hard to do. It's easy to be angry. In the Western world, huge proportions of Christian countries are now just becoming Islamic strongholds, and, and they can't be penetrated or, or changed. And, and Okay, so, but... Actually, see, this is how false rumors get spread. 
There's thousands and thousands of different Muslims becoming Christians right now. As I showed you guys on another video, 50,000 mosques shut down in Iran. Thousands and thousands of different Muslims are having dreams and visions of Jesus Christ coming to the Lord. Not only them, different Buddhists, different Hindus, thousands and thousands of them right now. You're making it seem like a lot of people that, uh, that worship Islam, they're very, very strict with their policies. There's, a lot, there, there's a lot that I... And by the way, let me speak positively about Islam so sure. people don't confuse my, my nature. We're friends here, by the way, everyone. We're on the same... Yeah, I, I, I Don't agree. speak for me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, Heathen. I, I, <laughs> let me speak positively about Islam. We, 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 see, we see where this is going. Uh, no, I actually, I, I really, 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 really respect Islam for yeah. one reason. The way they stand up for their God. Absolutely. And I actually take no. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this man said he really respects Islam for how they stand up for their God. Listen. This is what I would have said. And maybe he meant it like this. I can respect how there's order. There's order, you know, um, in Islam. There's a lot of order. There's a lot of order in different things, though, you know. But that's one thing that you can really, you can respect that there's there's order. You know what I mean? At least for people who are faithful. I know a whole lot of Muslims who are not, who are not in order at all. But. There's order, at least for the people who are faithful. But as far as saying I respect them because how they stand up for their God, do you know how ridiculous that sounds? Listen, if you are a Christian, you know that different religions have been infiltrated by Satan. So if you say you respect the different religion by how they how they love their God, that's like saying that's like saying I respect them by how they defend Satan. You hear what I'm t it's from them. Yep. So I don't want anybody here. In fact, my God is their prophet. Yep. So we That's do right. we do see a lot of That's eye right. to eye. We just don't see the the final destination of who God is. Correct. Um, but I this listen, the early church martyrs got their lives took because they did not respect other people's God. You understand? What I'm Read how Timothy was martyred read get the get the fox's book of martyrs so you can see how these early church christians were they weren't they weren't lenient like this when it came to different religions they would tell you like what you're worshiping is false what i'm what what you say take his life this modern day christianity is trash trash i'm gonna be the listen trash I'm I'm so sick and tired of people acting like God is not a just God. We don't we don't listen, as a true Christian, we don't say things to try to compromise with people. You don't do that. You say things that may be uncomfortable sometimes. Jesus said, you will have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. You think that was comfortable for them people? No. Many, many, many people left Jesus right when he said that. Like, oh, this dude crazy. Bro talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Let's get away from this lunatic. Did Jesus chase them down and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's actually a parable. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's actually a parable. Let me, come here. Let me, come here. I'm going to tell you the parable. No. So where do we get in our mind? We should start acting like we respect a, a religion. Too many soft Christians is the reason we're in this predicament we are in today. With America running wild. Do you realize if true children of God were stronger, coming into no compromise, it would be a better world? Definitely respect anybody in their in their faith, and I think it's. I'd rather you have faith in a God than you have no faith in God at all. Agreed. So we're on the same plane for that. Yeah. 
Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. Bro said, I'd rather you have faith in a God than you have no faith at all. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Who's, te- who's teaching him? So, 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 <clears throat> okay. Okay, George, if that's the case, would you be cool with a Satanist? Worshiping the devil? That's a God. That's a God. So you cool with... T- <laughs> oh, my God. People, am I losing it? Like, am I losing it? Please tell me in the comments if I'm losing it or if I'm just in a place where I know the truth. And I'm not willing to compromise for nobody being on my platform. It doesn't matter who they are. Am I tripping? I'd rather you worship a God than no God at all. What kind of buffoonery is that? Um... But to say that Christians have values and they don't follow them, and Islam does, it's not true. I, I have many friends. For example, you're Islamic now, yeah. but you drink yeah. and you smoke. No, I don't drink. Oh, not anymore. But there's a lot that I have friends with that do. Yeah. So the, the theory of them not following their rules is that's just a man. I don't think that's a religion. I think every man falls short. Yeah. I, think, I think this is the truth. I think an Islamic man that stands in front of me sins against God. And I think a Christian man sins against God. Oh, yeah. We're not perfect in any regard. Yeah. But let's tie back to something I said earlier. We're not perfect in any regard. And it's all down to how you once again measure the success of a religion. We talked earlier about measuring the success of a business and life numbers. being about money. Numbers, right? But why is numbers account when it comes to faith? I what, think it what, should be your, your well, faith. That's it. that's it. It should be your faith. But faith is very intangible and hard to measure. So I'm, I'm just use, be using my limited human brain. Mm-hmm. Let's just try and measure the success of a religion. Well, the fastest growing religion is Islam. It's not the biggest. It's the fastest growing. Yeah. I think if you were to look at the insanity of the West, I think Islam opposes it hardest in regards to the, the pure insanity that is being inflicted upon and bestowed upon children in the West. I think Islam I want to say something, hardest. a compliment for them. What I, I do appreciate is that they, they, they don't let you cross bounds, right? So, for example, when they were making a mockery of my Lord and Savior— yeah. I didn't see Christians trying to tear down these movies, and no. I didn't see Christians trying to, hey, that's not okay, or blah, 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 right? Islamic people were like, you're not talking about a prophet like that. Correct. So I, I find that very beautiful. And I understand that they hold their values. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you not find that appealing? Very. Do you not find it appealing to be part of a religion where you get to stand up for what you really believe in and say, no, you can't say that. No, you won't do that. No, not to us. Yeah. I- so, Mr. Tate, you left cr- being a Christian because you've seen people doing that in Islam. Why not just stand up for the Lord while you were a Christian? You're a sellout. I would never leave the one true living God because other people are doing something that I agree with when it comes to their God. You have a different God now, Mr. Tate. There's only one way to the kingdom. That is through Jesus Christ. You have taken your way out of that path. they have beautiful qualities that I should learn from. Yep. But that doesn't mean that I have to worship their God. I mean, people often ask why I reverted to Islam. And I, I, I heard someone say something that you see life and you see other people as you see yourself. So if you're a thief, you think everyone's a thief. You're worried about everyone stealing from you because you would steal in their position. Mm. That's how you like view the world. That's how cheaters view. That's how cheaters view the world. That's right. And then I was sitting thinking, well, maybe, and of course, this just came from my mind. I said, well, maybe you see a religion how you see yourself. Like I see myself as somebody who is feared nobody would want to mock. I see myself as somebody with strict standards and discipline. I see myself as somebody who stands up for what he believes in and doesn't care if he's assaulted and attacked for it. Mm. Maybe that's why it was so appealing to me. I, and then I, I'd sit and I'd study it and I'd read and I'd realize how close it actually is to Christianity. We believe in so many of the same things. And I don't want to get in trouble here because I am not an Islamic scholar in any way, but I've had even other people say to me, some Christians who I spoke to who started to read the Quran, they're like, it's just condensed. It's like stronger. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's what the appeal of it is to me. And I, I also like having hard yeses and nos. And I, I- what Christian read the Quran and said it's stronger? Ain't listen, boy, oh boy. This is the type of deception that a a, a lukewarm was here and look at and be like, hmm, maybe. 
if you had a Christian read the Quran and they felt like it was stronger than the word of God, that Christian does not have the Holy Spirit in them. You wonder why the word of God says many will come to me and I'll say depart from me. Many people say they're Christians. They don't mean they're Christians. Listen, it may be a lot of numbers that we see on, on documents that there's a lot of Christians, but truth be told, there's a remnant for God. A remnant. Like, this is complete buffoonery to me. I believe that if you have a religion where you just accept everything, yeah. then you believe in nothing. There has to be a line. In life, there has to be a line that you won't let someone cross. And with God, there should be the same. And my only concern with Christianity, and I, I argued this with my brother at length, is if God will really truly forgive anything, then, then, then if he'll truly forgive you doing the most heinous acts you can possibly think of and, and you repeatedly do them and you won't learn your lesson and you'll do them over and over again and even Christians themselves won't ostracize you. Hmm. Is that too far? Is that too much freedom? Like you asked earlier. I love this. So this is beautiful. It's actually in my notes. I was going to circle this with it. Um, let, me, let me just give me a second to make sure I word this properly. Absolutely. For, let's circle to forgiveness. Yeah. How many times should you forgive a man? Well, that's a really good question because we are sinners and we make endless mistakes. And the prophet that you see as Jesus, do you know what he talks about forgiveness as? Tell me. He's, Peter asks him, how many times should you forgive a man? And he says seven times 77. And then he also describes the way judgment day comes. And he goes, you will be measured by the measurement that you gave others. So the way you looked at your brothers and sisters, that man wronged you. But you said, you're dead to me. You're, you're dead. I don't even want it. Yeah. That's how you'll be measured. Yeah. But here, let me circle back. Repentance isn't doing the same sin over and over and enjoying it and asking for forgiveness. That's why God doesn't judge your actions, like I said. He judges the reflection of your heart. Yeah. So if I sinned against you, there's two types of men. Andrew, dude, listen, I'm a police officer. Andrew, I messed up, dude. Like, I'm so sorry that I Correct. did this, dude. I didn't mean it. This is what happened. And you could see the stress in his eyes from him hurting you. Hey, dad, dad, I know you told me not to do this. And I was, I was with my friends and, or, hey, Andrew, my bad, bro. Yeah, it won't happen again. Yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference. Of course there you is. You can't hide your heart from God. Absolutely. So I, that's why I say only God could judge. And, and I remember what I was going to say about uh, your God and my God, right? I believe that if there is a God out there, he wants you to come in the same direction that I'm going, yeah. the vice versa. So I think I never want to uh, debate religion ever because then I'm trying to disprove your God and that might be holding your heart and I don't want to do that. I agree. But what we could do is I say, I'll pray to my God and you pray to your God to open up one of our eyes and hearts and whoever is wrong or whoever is right will guide us with wisdom to the right direction. I love that. Mm. <clears throat> this I like. I agree with that. You pray to your God, Tate. <laughs> you pray to your God, Tate, and I'll pray to mine. <laughs> you pray to your God, and I'll pray to mine. And we'll see who does a number in whose heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what? I kind of feel like when I'm talking to people of other religious faiths, and I, like I said, I have to be very careful. I'm not an Islamic scholar. And like you said, I don't want to ever insult Christians or insult other religious yeah. faiths. The only people I have... A I like to argue with correctly and properly are atheists because they need to learn the light. Yeah, well, I, I'll join. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like if, if there's one God, let's imagine there's one sentence and it's the most beautiful sentence that you can possibly think of that can be constructed with the most compendious and, and gorgeous language that can be put together. I feel like the different religions are perhaps, di perhaps different languages to say the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, German sounds different to Russian, sounds different to English, but you can say it in different ways, but it all means the same thing. And I feel like that's the best way to look at it. And to a degree, the Quran also says the same thing. It says that we're a lot closer than we are apart. And I think when I meet somebody of another faith, I still feel happy for them. And I feel glad for them. It's only when I meet somebody who sits down and thinks they're a smart ass. Oh, no, we came from monkeys. I'm like, oh, bro, you need help. Those are the people I argue with. Uh, those people are more lost than ever. And here's the thing, man. Like, a lot of people will ask me, like, how do you forgive? Because forgiveness is such a, like, sometimes it gets so hard, especially when you know that that person wrongs you purposefully. Yep. Um, and 
my theory goes back to this. Forget the way I measure is the way he's going to measure me. Yeah. But my God came and paid a penalty for me yeah. because I couldn't pay that penalty. How can I look at another man knowing that every time I come on my knees and I say, God, like, provide me shelter, provide me safety, provide me this. And he always comes through for me. And then I wrong him. I walk. And by the way, this is the worst part. I walk into sin willingly, man. You think that I feel good having sex with my girlfriend? I do. That's besides the point. I felt I, I had to say I do because I do have I do yeah. I, I felt like I was gonna lie. And she's I do, watching. I do have gr I have yeah. great time having sex, but afterwards it like it haunts because we're not married. Yeah. Okay, that was a bad example. Let me take that out because that was a that's yeah. like, I'm walk. But you know what? No, that's true because I walk into that right. I walk into sin. That was my choice. I walked into it. Yeah. But God knows my heart. He knows what I'm dealing with. He knows my steps. Yeah. He hovers me because I ask Him to go before me. So He's making the path for me. Now, people, when they see me talk about God, they make it seem like I'm so holier than thou and I don't make mistakes. No, the beautiful part is I am an endless bucket of mistakes. We all are. But how gracious is God to be like, I get it, man. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to make this clear about George Jenko. Um, this is the man who used to be on the podcast with Logan Paul in Pulsive. And he left there and did his own thing. He started talking about God a lot. Logan Paul wasn't feeling it. And just a lot of bickering back and forth until he finally left. I, I you know, <clears throat> I like this guy's heart. You know, I think that um, the Lord truly has touched him, you know, and is pulling him. Now, listen, there may be things I don't agree with that he's saying, like in the beginning. But everybody has their process. He may not be here yet. He's still learning and the Lord's still filling him to be here. Everyone's still learning and, you know, it's still a process. But some people's journeys have been um, excelled, elevated faster than others, and some people's slower. Now, George may be right here, and, you know, but soon he'll come into the revelation that every other religion, every other thing other than the way of Christ is deception. He probably, he probably doesn't understand it yet. He probably doesn't know that yet. That's why he can say things like, I'm just glad everybody has a God. Like, that's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. But he just probably doesn't understand it yet. He needs more revelation on that. You know? Every time I meet somebody and they come into truth, I never, like, come hard on them about, you know, what they shouldn't shouldn't do and should do. I, I feed them the word. And the Lord Jesus Christ being fed to them will fill them more and more and more, and they will get the revelation of what they should and shouldn't do. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to be here to tell them don't do this, do that. I want to be here to feed them the word of God and the word of God being engrafted in them will give them revelation on why they shouldn't do this, why they shouldn't do that. Cause Christ is growing in them ultimately. Hallelujah. So George just probably most, well, most likely he doesn't have a teacher who's truly engrafting the word in him like that. He may have a pastor. He may have somebody teaching him, but they're not going into depth and revelation and spirit and truth to the point where he'll want to stop cursing, to the point where he'll want to stop saying he's he's glad other people just have a God, to the point where he says he respects other religions. This is our revelation that the Lord will give you when he gets filled in you. But if nobody's fe if you don't have a father feeding you, um, you'll end up in deception. You get what I'm saying? God has an order in his church. God has an order. You don't just pick up a Bible and start reading it and start thinking that you're getting spiritual in, in, uh, interpretation because you just do. That's how we have so many different denominations because people start interpreting the Bible the way they want to interpret it, thinking that they're getting it from God. No, God has order. Ephesians 3, 5 said God hands down his secrets and mysteries to his apostles and prophets. He also says the, the kingdom of God is in the mysteries, in the parables. So if the kingdom of God is in the mysteries and the parables, where do you get the mysteries and the parables? Where do you get the secrets and the mysteries from apostles and prophets? So you need an apostle and a prophet to teach you the secrets and the mysteries. You get what I'm saying? So if you don't have a true father, which is an apostle, teaching you the mysteries, teaching you the parables, teaching you the secrets, then you're not truly getting fed true spiritual meat. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You're not truly getting fed as a spiritual child the way the Lord wants us to. This is why the Lord had order in the church. Now, the problem is the early church fathers who were apostolic, who were fathers in the church, who did pass down tradition to tra tradition to tra tradition from son to son to son, it got, it got pulled away. 
truth got pulled away. Roman Catholicism, Roman Catholicism came in, 325 AD, Roman Emperor Constantine. Many people went astray in different denominations, different paganism came into church, and truth started to spread. Now we have over 30,000 denominations of Christianity with a lot of truth and some falsehood. But some falsehood will lead you down the wrong path. God wants all one truth. God wants one truth, one body. That's why when people say things like, we can, dis- we can agree to disagree when it comes to being a Christian, that is ludicrous. That is, that is absolutely absurd. We cannot agree to disagree. You know what they used to do when they had different, um, when, they, when they didn't agree with each other back in the days of the early church fathers? They would go to an early church father who knew interpretation of scripture because of tradition passed down, apostolic tradition passed down. And they would ask him and he would tell them, oh, it's this and debate over, debate over. But we don't have that now. We have this denomination thinking they're right and this denomination thinking they're right. This theologian thinking he's right and this theologian thinking he's right. No true depth to go to truth. But we are coming back. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Early Church Fathers books have now been written in English. And it's been like that for a while. But nobody chooses to go back and read them. Hallelujah. But we are starting to now. Glory be to God. So George just needs more revelation. Pray for him to come into more revelation. Amen. I'm praying for the brother. I like his heart. You know, I truly believe the Lord touched him. Glory be to God. I think the way we get out of sin and the blessings that are given to us, like you are blessed. But do you know why you are blessed? Because you were given the privilege of wisdom. Yeah. There's another top G somewhere else. Same body, same brain, same yeah. everything. Yeah. But he didn't have that wisdom. And wisdom was given to you. Proverbs in the Bible was a king. And he could have asked anything from God. And he goes, I just want wisdom. How does God give wisdom to you? He meant Solomon. How does he give wisdom to me? First, you got to seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open, right? So it's like, what are you asking for? For example, when I ask God to be in this meeting, right? I don't go, hey, God, please make sure I have a great, great podcast and I kill it and I get views. No, I go, God, hey, let me stir up a conversation that wakes up somebody's heart. But for me to do that, I need to be prepared. So prepare me to be a man that could talk against a man who's very diligent with his tongue. I wasn't prepared for this. God made me prepare for this. So when I ask God for things, I don't get lazy with my prayers. I don't go, hey, God, make me a rich, famous man. No, how do you get there? If God was sitting at this table and we're going to try to conquer this world in a healthy way, how are we going to do it? We got to ask for steps. First, I need a good team. I need good hearts. I need the right tools. People are asking God as if he's a -a make-a-wish genie, like just like, hey, I want to... A baddie with a fatty. It's like, bro, what are you, what are you going? Like, what do you? Some of the prayers that people ask that God doesn't even deliver is better for them not to have it. He knows best. He knows best. But I also feel like God gives wisdom. God gives wisdom through tribulation and suffering. I'm smarter because of jail. He wanted to teach me something. But question: Did you not ask for this life first? Oh, absolutely. So what came first? Was it the fact that you thirsted for a higher life or was it that God threw you into that? Because for me, if you asked me to be a trainer, hey, I need you to train me, I'm going to put you through your test. Oh, absolutely. So you asked God for that. Oh, he completely. didn't just put you in that circumstance. And, that, and that's one of the things that's very interesting. You have people who will sit at home and pray for an exceptional life. They'll say, I don't want to live a normal life. I want an exceptional life. I want a special life, a different life. And then they'll do exceptional things. They'll fly on a private jet. They'll buy a Bugatti. They'll sit in a $10 million mansion somewhere on the coast and then cry if they end up in jail. Exceptional doesn't always mean good. Exceptional means deviate from the norm. You begged God for exceptional. A Romanian jail cell is a unique experience just as a Bugatti on a private jet is a unique experience. If you want the experiences, there's no light without dark. You can't have both. If you're going to pray to God and ask for all these amazing things, you have to understand there's an equal and opposite force and you will pay the price. And who else, okay, here's a beautiful thing. Let me backtrack that one line you just said. You could pray for something, but remember there's two people on the phone listening to your prayers. Yeah. I like that. And here's the craziest part. You know when who's giving it to you. Yep. You know. You Deep can in your heart, it. you can feel it. Oh, of course you can feel it. You're I, lying to me if you I, say you can't feel it. And you know it. what? Maybe that's where I'm self-reflecting. We're talking about being vulnerable. I'll be vulnerable. Maybe that's actually where a lot of my motivation comes from, despite the fact I think I'm genuinely putting my life and my livelihood in danger by speaking so much truth against the matrix is... If I was getting all of this money and all of this fame and I wasn't talking about God and doing good for the world... I'd be very sure the devil was giving it to me. I'd feel it. 
I'd feel cheap. I'd feel dirty and I would feel anxious. Like, okay, I've got this fame. What am I doing for the world? Okay. I may be entertaining. I may get some views. I may get some clicks, but what am I giving the people who believe in me? Am I scamming them? Am I hurting them? Are they getting better? What am I doing for the people who know my name? Am I just taking all this shit from the devil and I'm not giving anything back? Am I actually making anyone feel better about themselves? And then you sit there and realize that, yeah, you are. You're taking it from the devil and you'll pay the price tenfold with your soul. Do you this ever- is why I sit. This is why I sit and find the bravery to think I'm currently on bail in the middle of a judicial process inside of the country we are sitting in right now. I've been advised by all legal counsel to not do podcasts. Here I am doing a podcast. Why? Because I know people will listen to it and I can give a good message out there. And I believe that I can dr- drive people in a holy direction, regardless of which religion, whether they choose Christianity or Islam, I believe there will be people who watch this and decide to believe in God. That- Regardless to which religion, my question for both of these fellas is, how much do you believe in your faith? How much do you believe in what you believe in? How much? Because if the Christian man believes in what he believes in, like it, like the word says, then he will know that this man is in full error. And if the Muslim believes in what he believes in as much as he supposed to believe in it, then he'll know the Christian's in full error. What is this? What is this mixture at this table? It's Babylon up in here. Got me itching. There is no, listen. (sighs) There is no, my religion is right and your religion is right. First of all, I don't even like religion. We have a relationship with God. Islam is a religion. Christians have a relationship with the Lord. We are children of God. It's a difference. It's a difference. We love the Lord. The Lord loves us. It's worth it to me. And then the money I'm achieving 10 years from now, whatever, I know it came from me trying to do the right thing. I didn't scam people on crypto. I didn't sell shit to kids. I didn't do none of that stuff. That, that is from the devil. And you will pay the price for that. You can't, there's no light without dark. You can't just go through life robbing banks and think you're going to get away with it. I, I, got a, I got a parable for you that's in the Bible. And I think this kind of relates to you a little bit. Do, but before I say that, can I, and, and be honest with me, do you feel like in your heart that if you did not do that for God, or if you did not do it, you feel like it's going to be taken away from you? Yes. There's a parable in the Bible. And I'm going to rephrase it. So I want people to go read it because I'm going to most likely not do it justice, but I'm going to speak in a way that people can understand. We'll say a king comes up to three servants. He goes, I'm going to give you four pieces of gold. Or no, 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 crops. We'll say crops, right? Four crops for you, two crops for you, one crop for you. Go, plant your fields. The one with four goes, awesome. Look what God gave me. Boom, boom, boom. And he made it like so much. The second one who had two, he goes, wow, he gave me two. Boom, 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 boom. And I did it. Okay. The one who has one goes, oh, man, I don't want to mess up with the one thing that he gave me. I'm going to give the other guys like four and then three. And then I'm going to mess this up. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hide it. I'm going to hide it. And then when God comes back, I'm going to hey, man, I didn't lose. Look, I have it right here. You know what God did? He cursed them. He said, give it to me. And he gave it to the one who could multiply it. Because at the end, he thought that all of the glory was because of him. But he should have known that if it did well, it was going to be for God. So there was no failing. You have to go out and know that everything was given to you. And it's a privilege to be in the chair that you're in. Absolutely. To have that voice that you have that could tune into so many of these kids' ears. Yep. There's a responsibility that you're holding. I truly think the next journey that you're going to have is a spiritual one. Yeah. I think it is. Oh, and you're completely right. And, and when you asked me the question that I said yes to, the reason I said yes is, if God gave me this platform and then I acted a coward and I was afraid to talk because of the matrix or because they came for me or because I'll lose my money or because I'll, they'll lock me up, I would pay for that cowardice. You give it to the one who's not a coward. You give it to the man who's not a coward, which, which might be the reason he gave it to me in the first place. Because I was the one who was standing up fighting against all this shit earlier on. Just the one who did it. I was the one who went nuts. And I think that's why you were boasted in pride because at the moment he's like, I'm not going to remove that from him just yet yeah. because that's what's fueling him. Yeah. Regardless, I need him to do that job. Yeah. Apostle Paul, he killed people. 
He was killing Christians. He just destroys this Christian that was a disciple in front of him. And that Christian was like, this is so predictable. Look at you guys. He goes, you guys have done this on and on and on. And then God took Paul and made him one of the greatest disciples. This is an ongoing thing that people don't understand. It's usually the people that God, the humans would be like, God would never use that guy. And then there's like, oh, he was that guy. When Jesus was born, the first thing they ask is from where? That's their first question. Yeah. From wh the ghetto? What good comes from that place? Why are they, why, hey, the kings of kings is coming from there? Don't believe it. Yeah. Are kings coming in on a donkey? I don't believe it. Yeah. I think, I know you don't talk to people. I know that after you're done with a podcast, you kind of go on and do what you need to do. But I'd love to stay in contact because I feel like we could sharpen each other. I think so too. I think it'd be very interesting, certainly. I think, uh, to be honest, I, I would love to extend the conversation, but sometimes when I feel like it's, it's ready to go, it's ready to go. We have part two ready, already lined up, so it'll happen some point, some point in the future. Thank you so much for being here, man. Anytime. I really, and truly, because like, th this, this is uh, putting my show on a different map, and I think you know that too. Yeah. And I really appreciate your time. Thank, thanks for coming, friend. Hey, man. Overall, um, everybody, has their, everybody has a purpose, right? And you may think like George Janko needs should be somewhere else or should be saying this and saying that, but the Lord put him in that position for a reason. And it may be to reach Andrew Tate, right? He was saying different things that was having Andrew really think, you know what I mean? And him not having certain revelation to be able to say things like how I was saying it, like we shouldn't, agree religions like that him not be having that re that re revelation to be able to say that may bring him closer to that man and other people you know what i mean and just something on him the lord on him um will reel them in the way the lord wants to reel them in through that man so different people have their own journey different people have their own process and different people are used for different things you know what i mean so Amen. May the Lord's will be done. Not what I think should be done. Not not what I think he should elevate um, when he should elevate. But may the Lord's will be done in his life. Hallelujah. May he stay on that straight path with Jesus Christ. And may the Lord fill him up with revelation when the Lord believes um, it's okay. When the Lord believes he should have it. Hallelujah. Not when we believe he should have it, but when the Lord believes he should have it. May he continue to seek truth and may he find it. Glory be to God. Amen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, if this video is not up or, you know, if you don't see it, you guys go to my patreon.com slash Isaiah Robin. It will be up on there. If you guys just want to simply support, you can go here as well. There's more videos on here than there is on YouTube. Hallelujah. I love you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. God bless. Shalom.